Good morning and welcome to this Sunday, the Sunday before Advent, the Sunday known as Christ the King. Um, lovely to see you all here and to be here in a warm church, isn't that wonderful? And there are refreshments this morning as well. Um, this is also a, a service where we have the prayer for healing, so if you wish to share a prayer or be prayed for in the little chapel there, um, when you've taken communion, do please go through there. There will be people to, um, to be with you there. I think um, Whit Church has had a rather lovely weekend, and I have a, a notice here that's saying um, um, thank you to those of you who helped with the crib festival here. You can see all these wonderful cribs here up the sides of the church. And um, to let you know that... Uh, uh, 366 people came to look at those yesterday. That's wonderful. It's actually more than last year. 294 adults and 72 children. And thank you to everyone who brought a crib here. They will be blessed a little bit later on this morning. And thank you to everyone who helped and who made people so welcome in here because that is what it's all about, the church being a place where people feel happy to come in and to come in and talk to you. Um, notices on the backs of your sheets. Um, the um, da -da -da -da. Thank you to everyone, of course, who supported the Christmas coffee morning last Saturday and for the large sums of money raised there, um, £1,752.46, p, uh, which came from there. Hilda says, thank you very much. Um, she and all the workers who were there worked so very hard, and it was a, it was a, a wonderful time. Um, da -da 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 I think everything else you can see. The Christchurch uh, Tilstock's Christmas Fair is next Saturday. Um, there's, uh, the Falls is having a grand Christmas draw, and you can uh, buy tickets from PCC members there. And then there are two events coming here. Uh, the Chris Ingle service here will be on the 3rd of December at 4 o'clock. And Shrewsbury Corps will be performing the Messiah here 
on Saturday the 9th of December at 7.30pm, um, but you buy the tickets from the choral organisation, I think. Um, so that, that will actually be a wonderful thing as well before Christmas there. Um, and one other thing, food bank box. We're once again putting the food box out for donations, but it's only there on a Sunday. Uh, but they'll be delighted to have support from St. Altman's again. They really value that. I don't think, are there any other notices I've missed? So in a moment we're going to sing our first hymn, hymn 565, Rejoice the Lord is King, hymn 565. with you and also with you. You'll find the wording for our prayer of preparation in the middle of page three of your red service booklet. So if we would sit or kneel for the prayer of preparation. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gather at Lord's table, we must recall the promises and warnings. Give us in the scriptures... Let us therefore examine ourselves and repent of our sins. Turning to the top of page four of your service booklet, we say together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left and done those things that we ought to have done. And we have done those things that we ought not have done. And there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy upon us, sins of us. 
Brothers, confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent, according to the promises declared to mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful Lord, for his sake, that we may live in a disciplined righteousness, a godly life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You'll find the Gloria in the separate A5 size booklet. And we're now going to stand to sing the Gloria. Remain standing for the collect, which you will find in the long white pew sheet at the top left hand side. We say together God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to go in his service. We pray in the Lord, for him to be you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. We sit for today's readings. <clears throat> David had been the great shepherd king, and the Jews longed for another king like him. Today's gospel will pick up the thought of the king as shepherd. We hear first from Ezekiel, 
preparing for a divine intervention into history, speaking of God himself as the gatherer of his flock into safety, under a worthy successor to David. A reading from the prophecy of Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. A shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Ephesians 1, 15 to the end. Paul's great hymn of prayer and praise extols the power of God at work in all the faithful, and the Lord Jesus Christ raised up as King over all things. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know that what is the hope to, to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power. For us who believe, according to the working of his great power, God put this power to work in Christ. He raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule, authority, and power and dominion, and above every name that is, is named, not only this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the, the head over all things for the church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now sing our gradual hymn, number 434, Majesty, Worship His Majesty. We stand to sing hymn number 434.
standing for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you. you. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, Just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak now in the name of Christ, Christ the King, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Would you please be seated? There are some quite tough readings there. (laughs) And uh, when we were talking about them a little bit earlier, the choir said to me, are you going to preach about that? And I went, no. (laughs) In a sense, it's very clear, isn't it? Sheep and goats, fat sheep, lean sheep. The message is there all the time. Do to others, see in others. What you would do to Christ, see Christ in everyone. He's not looking to find fat sheep. He's not looking to find goats. He's hoping we're all going to be on the right side of this. And tricky though it is, we have Christ with us always to try this. The one thing I do notice about the passage from Ezekiel when God is saying, I will be their God, we will lead the sheep. My servant David shall be prince, not king, prince. For the king is yet to come. And today is the Sunday of Christ the King. So today, Sunday, Christ the King, it's the last Sunday of the church year. And next year, the uh, next week, sorry, the year begins again as the first Sunday of Advent. 
It'll be four Sundays before Christmas. I hope that's not making you panic at all. But it should make us rejoice, shouldn't it? Christ the King is the glorious and magnificent title for today. But in many ways, it shouldn't be confined to one Sunday. It's a title we ought to use every week. Acknowledging Christ as our King is fundamental to our faith. Not a king, of course, created in the sense that the world might demand, but a king whose purpose and mission is to show us that by acknowledging his majesty, we truly accept the ongoing power of his humility and of his love for the world. Understanding this truth of kingship should stir our faith and send ripples into the world around us. So in addition to this being the Sunday of Christ the King, One of the official prayers set for today reminds us that it is also Stir Up Sunday. You'll see in the post-communion prayer that there's the Stir Up prayer. Stir Up Sunday. Now, this title might seem a little more frivolous. It's a Sunday by tradition synonymous, as many of you will know, with Christmas puddings. I don't know how many of you made any or whether you even do. I have to admit that I nowadays go and buy mine, but there we are. Some of you will still be good at doing this. So Stir Up Sunday is the traditional day for making your Christmas puddings. It's supposedly uh, accompanied by a great cry of stir up. So I'm supposed to say to you, stir up Sunday, and you're supposed to shout back, stir up. But... um, one or two people are looking a bit alarmed, so perhaps we won't do that. Should we give it a go? Go on then. Stir up Sunday. Stir up. Hey, there you are. There's always somebody to cause trouble. Stir up Sunday was a reminder to congregations to get the Christmas puddings made and stirred in plenty of time to mature before Christmas. It involved a certain amount of excitement and anticipation about what was to come over the next few weeks. And it wasn't quite as frivolous as it sounds because the puddings involved were to be shared by neighbours and family at Christmas. On Stir Up Sunday, by inviting all the family and especially the children to come and help stir, the purpose was explained to them. Thus the children were taught a little more of the Christian story of sharing what you have with all those in need and of working together to create this feast. Making it involve some symbolism. A Christmas pudding, as you may know, was traditionally made with 13 ingredients to represent Christ and his disciples. And a proper Christmas pudding was always stirred from east to west in honour of the three wise men who visited the baby Jesus. In addition, every member of the family was to be involved in giving the pudding a stir and making a secret wish or a secret prayer. A silver coin, as some of us will remember, was traditionally added to the ingredients and cooked in the pudding. It was supposedly to bring wealth to whoever found it on their plate, providing they didn't swallow it on Christmas Day. And other additions to the pudding might include a ring to foretell a marriage and a thimble for a lucky home. However, as I said, the name Stir Up Sunday really has nothing to do with these myths or even with puddings, but comes from the opening words of the collect the special prayer for the day on the last Sunday of the church year in the Book of Common Prayer, first included in 1549. And it wasn't actually until Christmas puddings became fashionable in the mid-19th century that this became the traditional day to go home after church and make your puddings. The original prayer for today has been adapted into more modern language, as you can see here, but it remains a BCP collect. It is often the Church of England's prayer after communion on this day, and it will be today. So we will say these words at the end of our Eucharist. The prayer for which Stir Up Sunday is actually named, and the old version is this, Stir up, we beseech thee, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people, that they plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may of thee be plenteously rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The stir-up prayer is asking God for something much more important than a pudding. We are praying that as the season of Advent approaches, that it's time of reflection and its promise of the coming of Christ, God will stir up our wills so that we might prepare to be in a proper state to receive him. Stir us up, Lord, so that we might begin to do the good works that you've planned for us to do then we might receive our abundant reward, not in terms of wealth or prosperity, 
but in terms of becoming living and functioning members of Christ's body. Charles Royden, the vicar of St Mark's Church in Bedford, wrote, In an age when so much is about how we feel, it's interesting to get another perspective. In the end, as the stir-up collect reminds us, it's not our feelings, but our will that is the most important governor of our actions. Real love is not about feeling, it is about choosing by our wills to do good to others, as God would have us do, even though we may not always feel good towards them. Our feelings should not dominate our wills, and our wills should be aligned to God's will. So we pray that God will stir up our wills, so that they will be in charge of us, doing what we know is right. In this prayer, we recognise that we need God's help in order for our wills to function properly. Our will to follow Christ, our will to be open and honest about our beliefs, and our will to do good despite our inadequacies. This is also, therefore, the time to stir up our own memories, to remind ourselves and each other on this Sunday of Christ the King that Advent truly heralds the coming of Christ our King. In fact, not unlike Stir Up Sunday, Christ the King is a relatively modern title for the Sunday before Advent. The name was proposed by Pope Pius XI and adopted by the Roman Catholic Church and later the Church of England only in 1925. But adopting this title was a deliberate act and intended to encourage Christians to stand up to the growing political dictatorships of the world. There's a lesson for us. Fascism and communism were opposed to each other, but both denied freedom of thought and belief outside their own manifestos. Christianity was sidelined, increasingly outlawed. The rule of Christ was seen as a direct challenge to these new ideologies. So in adopting the Sunday of Christ the King, the church is wished to proclaim to the world in the face of growing persecution that Christ's kingship comes from a loving God who grants us free will to accept his ways of justice and peace. The serious challenge of accepting Jesus' kingship is reflected in the gospel passage of today. Even in today's world, that sovereignty of Christ is threatened both by active persecution and by ridicule and indifference. Jesus' words in Matthew's Gospel are a challenge to us all. If we wish to be counted with his flock of sheep and not cast out with the goats, then we must align our actions to his will. We do not serve with thought of reward. and will not enter his kingdom by our own merit, but by God's grace. Christ the King does not impose the will of dictatorship, but of a loving God. Do we follow God's will and side with the poor, the needy, the rejected, the misunderstood, with those whom society usually rejects? Do we even always see these people in the world around us? And do our actions bring God's loving care to them? The passage in Matthew comes just before the betrayal and arrest of Jesus. He warns his followers to hold firm and invites them to become the body of Christ. Those who will not recognise his kingship will reject his identity and rely on the power of political institutions. Jesus will appear before the authorities as utterly powerless. But it is he who wields the power because he knows where his power comes from and what it really means. We have a king in Jesus who spends his time caring for the weak and frail who, tortured and hung on the cross, is still opening the gates of his kingdom to the bewildered, misled rabble around him, to all of us. Human kings gain power in order to reign over us. Jesus demonstrates his authority by showing such forgiveness and love for his people that he gave his life for us on that cross. So today is a day when we can encourage each other as a body of Christ, when we can remind ourselves that Christ is our King. Today is a day when we are encouraged to own Christ in our hearts, to stir one another up and remind ourselves that the advent of Jesus Christ should allow him to be King of every part of our lives. We can move towards Advent and prepare ourselves for the coming of King Jesus at Christmas. Amen.
The words of the Nicene Creed can be found on page six towards the bottom of your red booklets. And we stand to say together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We sit or kneel for our prayers of intercession. A few weeks ago, I was introduced to this litany. It's not very long, but it's extraordinarily poignant. And when we look around our world today, I just thought I'd like to share it with you. It comes from Coventry Cathedral, and it was written by Canon Joseph Poole in 1958, and it's prayed every day at midday. And throughout the world also by partners in the community of the Cross of Nails, which is, it stems from Coventry Cathedral. The response is, Father, forgive. All have sinned and taken, fallen short of the glory of God. The hatred which divides nation from nation, race from race, class from class. Father, forgive. The covetous desires of people and nations to possess what is not their own. Father, forgive. The greed which exploits the work of human hands and lays waste the earth. Father, forgive. Our envy of the wealth and happiness of others. Father, forgive our indifference to the plight of the imprisoned, the homeless, the refugee. Father, forgive. The lust which dishonours the bodies of men, women and children. Father, forgive. The pride that leads us to trust in ourselves 
and not in God. Father, forgive. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Father God, we thank you that the boiler is working again this week and that we can worship in a comfortable temperature and enjoy socialising over hot drinks afterwards. Please help us to make the very best use of our new kitchen. As temperatures begin to plummet, we remember those who will be sleeping rough and those unable to afford to heat their homes adequately, asking that help may be available. And we pray too for those people who were flooded out several weeks ago and have gone off the news, but they're still left with a mess. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And we thank you for the happy crib festival yesterday and the poignant memories they evoke for us, the contributors. Please may your Holy Spirit have touched many of the real meaning of Christmas. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and we do thank you that Hamas has handed over more hostages yesterday thus keeping up the truce in Gaza and please in the next two days may more be released and might that result in the truce being extended so that more fuel and basic food and water can be brought in. Father, please bless all peacemakers and may a just solution to this terrible situation be found. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Father, we know that the food bank gets rushed off its feet at this time of year. Please, may people be generous and may there be sufficient goods to meet the need the needs. And we do pray for James and the choir as they prepare for the future with extra work involved leading up to Christmas. We thank you that the building work is nearly completed, including our heating system, which is now up and running. And Father, may we be patient if we find the odd flaws, because snagging is something that comes with building, and may we be patient if it's not totally as we would like it. And we do thank you for the crib festival that took place yesterday and the town switching on the Christmas lights. It was a lovely occasion. Thank you so much. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
among those among those who are unwell. We pray for Kathy Davis, Steve White, Pauline Watt, Watson, Robin, Jennifer Roberts, Oliver Knott, Len Allen, Maureen Foster, and for the families and friends and Oxen School following the death of those four young people in Shrewsbury. And we ask your comfort and strength for the brief families and friends of Betty Jones, Ronald Rock, Sheila Morehouse, Celia Camplin, Barry Hardy, Eileen Bentley, and Ethel Fawcett. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. To crown all things, there must be love. To bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us show one another a sign of the peace. Our offertory hymn this morning is hymn number 343, Jesus is King. So we'll remain standing for hymn number 343.
We say together the um, prayer on page 8. Blessed be God, by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God forever. I invite you now to sit or kneel for the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks that he is the King of glory who overcomes the sting of death and opens the kingdom of heaven to all believers. He is seated at your right hand in glory, and we believe that he will come to be our judge. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. I accept our praise as Heavenly Father through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. We say together the prayer on page 14. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. This is an open table. All are welcome to come to receive from this table or to receive a blessing, whichever is your custom. And the prayer of healing will take place in the side chapel.
We join now in the post-communion prayer, which you'll find on the inside of your white sheets. And we say together, Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plenteously rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together the prayer on page 15. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Before our um, dismissal this morning, before the prayer of blessing and the final hymn, there are two things to bless. Uh, First of all, I have this beautiful cross to remind us eternally of Christ the King, Christ our King. It's made from oak from the pews removed from St. Altman's here, in 2023. Eric Williams has wonderfully made this for us and it was given to us for today. So 24th of 11 is the date on that. Today I'm going to ask for a moment for a prayer of blessing. So Lord God, as we receive this beautiful cross, may it always be a reminder that as our King you sacrifice everything for us. May we come to you in love and praise. May this cross May Eric, who made it, and all of us who will see it and use it, be truly blessed by you today and always. Amen. Thank you. And the, the other blessing is for the cribs, most of which I think will go from here soon. So we pray for these cribs. O oh Lord our God, we thank you for coming to share our life, born as a baby placed in the manger. We thank you for those who have designed and assembled these cribs gathered here. We ask you to bless with your presence each place where they will be displayed, whether that be home, school, shop, church or other business. May each crib be a beacon of hope for us and for the whole world so that we face the coming days of Advent with courage and renewed hope. May they bring the light of Christmas into our hearts and our homes, filling them and all the earth with joy and peace in the promise of Christmas. We ask this in the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Amen. And so our final blessing is for us all this morning. Christ our King, make us faithful and strong to do his will that we may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Sammy. Our final hymn today for our Christ the King service is number 92. Christ triumphant, ever reigning. We stand to sing hymn number 92.
to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Thank you. 